Hello again, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dice Bag with more pack reviews. And today, we got a little theme for this video. It's going to be incompetence. Specifically, deliberate incompetence. Now, Wizards of the Coast has a bit of a history with being incompetent, in case you haven't heard. Um, that's one of the reasons why I kind of hate this this set so much, because it shows just how they're deliberately incompetent. So, we got here, we got Green Arrow and Self-Made Man Tezzeret. So, who do we open first? Let's do Green Arrow. Worst for first, best for last. Now, the thing about this set is that they know how to do, they know how to make good core sets. They figured that out years ago. Here, here's how you make a good core set. You bring back a mechanic from another set, like an expert level mechanic, and you make new cards with it. And you make like half the set new cards and half reprints. That was the way you got core sets to work. New players were okay with it. They could understand it. It wasn't too complicated. Old players liked it because it had new cards, and they were good, and they brought new design space to mechanics that they liked from before. So what's what does the Coast do as soon as it brings back core sets? It doesn't do that. They don't bring back anything. There's no returning mechanics here. Look at this. No returning mechanic there. You know, three mana, two, three, when it enters the battlefield, return to artifact. Target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Omen Speaker. Uh, Macabre Waltz. What have we got? Wish Rejuvenator. Blah, blah, blah. This was the battlefield. Look at the top five cards of your library. Onto the battlefield. Tap. So, you know, it's a rampant growth on a body. Uh, Brogart Brute. Boring stuff. Wall of Mist. Ah! Get out of here. I hate that card. It's so stupid. Uh, Rabbit Bite, Manolith. I like Manolith. May not be particularly great, but I like it. <laughs> Normal Endurance, what is that? Till end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains this creature. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield, tapped under its owner's control. That seems familiar. They made one like that in Innistrad. Uh, Ghost Form, Reprint, Dragon Egg. Pretty sure that's a reprint from another core set. Spark Twins. I don't remember this one. Uh, can block an additional creature each combat. Okay, Sleep. It's an old one. One with the machine. Eh, Timber Grove. Uh, draw cards equal to the highest converted mana cost among artifacts you control. Hmm. Hmm. It's probably not as good as one would like to think. But you notice it's all just just bland bland. <laughs> there's no there's no returning mechanic at all. And they they got this thing for defenders. Why are there so many defenders in this in this set? Like this. That's real fun, guys. Real fun to have things that just sit there and block. Oh, ironically. Ah, that wasn't smooth. We have the Tezzeret theme card in the not Tezzeret pack. On the next. Ah. Uh. Eh. Goblin Motivator, one mana. Target creature gains haste until end of turn for a tap and 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Gearsmith Prodigy, an actual card that I actually like. <laughs> Fire Elemental, uh, they're, still, they're still printing this. Greenwood Sentinel, yeah, Mine Rot, Reprint, Rotter's Axe. Is that a reprint or is that just another generic axe? I don't know. Uh, Cavalry Drill Master, 2-1 for 2. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike of in, until end of turn. Oh. Uh, 
why would you why do you put a combat trick on a on a creature and not give it flash i don't get that the whole point of like having cards that give first strike is to trick your opponent into blocking it and then ha first strike boy shock uh bad lightning bolt naturalize been around forever uh an acclimation sage enters the battlefield and you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that's a sideboard card declared dominance meteor golem amulet of safekeeping what's this one uh, two mana artifact. Whenever you become the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays one. Okay, so it's apparently it's kind of like an anti burn card, I guess. Just so you can't be, you know, hit a triple burn spell to the face on your last turn. I don't know. It seems really narrow. But, you know, that's the name of the game in these things. So, you know, once again, there's no, not a single really interesting mechanic to be played with here. Do, do they have... I don't see a defender in this one. Ah. All right. So there you have it. Look. <sighs> Wizards of the Coast. You guys know how to do things well. Do it. For once in your freaking lives, do what you know will work. We've been through this many, many times. You brought back core sets. Or no, you, you didn't bring back core sets. You beefed up the core sets years ago. And for five years... They were doing great. Everybody liked them. New core sets were like, oh man, they're, they're completely unrestricted. There's no real flavor restrictions or anything. Then you came out with Origins, and it was uh, like a, a flavor core set, or a themed core set, as you might say about your master sets, and it's terrible. It's, it was just a bad idea. But it was the last one. You know, trying new things, whatever. You get over it. So then, you go to this uh, two-block-per-year model, where you get two blocks, two sets each, and from the, from the get-go, you guys said, okay, we're doing this, we're going to take out core sets, that means we're going to have to do more reprints in the expert-level sets or whatever. Then you didn't do it. You didn't do it. And when things, when things, you know, hit the wall and went bad because you didn't do the thing you said you needed to do, like, what was it? The what, whatchamacallit copter? The thing that you banned and had to do a bunch of other bannings because the thing that was banned was supposed to be keeping another thing in check? Well, well, gee. One of the first things you guys said was like, oh man, maybe if we printed Pithing Needle or, or Duress in one of these sets that it wouldn't have been so bad. Why didn't you do it? You had plenty of room. You're too busy filling your sets with limited garbage that people are just going to draft once and then throw in the trash to line their garbage cans of the LGS on their way out. Instead of doing that, you could have put actual cards in the sets that were actually good and could actually be used in a constructed deck. So now we're back to this. We're back to this. We're back to core sets. And you forgot how to do it. How? How? It wasn't that long ago. You had a streak. You had a streak going of like five core sets in a row that were pretty dang good. How do you do this? I don't get it. I don't get it. How you can be just... How you can be, you know, doing great, doing great, doing great. Then you want to change one thing, knowing that it's going to mess things up. Knowing that you're going to have to change the way you do things. Don't do that. And then go back to the old model and screw it up too. Even though you already know how to do this for sure. 
All right, I'm done ranting. It's 10 minutes. I'll see you guys later for more screaming and anger.